we were like, without any new music, we, we basically have no reason to keep touring. We should just, we should end it. You know, it's over. And then, uh, and then my chemical romance were like, well, you do have to play our first show back though. Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound with another one of our video calls. We're catching up with everyone while we're all stuck at home. Delighted to say from Thursday, Jeff's on the line. How are you, man? I'm good, James. How you doing? Yeah, good, man. Good to see you again. Uh, I'm starting all these off with the kind of obvious question of, are you okay? Is everyone safe? Everyone happy where you are? You know, making the best of things at this weird time? Yeah, I'm, I'm safe. I'm, I'm okay. Um, you know, it's, it's weird. New York's a real epicenter. Um, so it feels like I'm in a zombie movie, but I'm healthy and my partner's healthy and that's about all I could ask for at the moment, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's the best you can ask for and that's all good to hear, man. Very, very, very pleased to hear that. And, I, you know, you are one, one of these people I've been wanting to talk to ever since all this madness began because you've been so active on social media and everything and really kind of figuring out some new innovative ways to help people and to kind of do some cool stuff. I want to get into all that because it's really, really interesting stuff. Let's start with the masks, which was such a great idea. Um, right. Talk to you about the branded masks idea, first of all, and then we'll get into all the other stuff because it's it's just such a nice concept. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, really early on, maybe like a week into lockdown, we were talking about like, well, what are we going to do, right? Like, what what are we going to do? We were, we had a bunch of plans that we were supposed to do in, in the weeks coming and, um, and a bunch of shows coming up and, uh, and, our drummer was about to have a baby he's now since had the baby. And so we were like, what can we do to raise money for, you know, for the band members and stuff. And really quickly the call turned into like, well, everybody needs money, right? Like what's the most urgent thing. And so we were like, well, we could help, um, you know, try and get masks to doctors and hospitals. We could try and do this. We could try and do that. And that's when Paul, our manager was like, you know, we could have all our shirts converted into masks. There's all these collectives around. And then he just started doing all this research about it. And we realized we could make our own and, and use all the profits from that to make even more masks for hospitals and doctors and, and grocery store workers and, you know, essential personnel all over the cities and stuff like that. Uh, Cause mostly it's benefiting the city, the cities that we live in, which is New York, uh, the States that we live in, New York, New Jersey, and uh and maryland those are that's where the thursday members live at the moment so that's where we've been donating and that's how it came up it came up us starting to think about like how can we help ourselves and then pretty quickly we realized you know everybody needs help and you know we're worried about it like we we come from a modest background you know um, very working class um, for the most part in thursday so um you know it's not like we have a ton of money and we're just going to help everybody else but it, it is sort of like realizing we're all on this together yeah, no, absolutely. And, and being able to give back to communities and especially in your local communities like that is such an amazing, amazing thing. Talk to me about some of the practicalities there, because that, that was the, the thing that really, really intrigued me. You've seen a few bands since in the wake of you guys doing that, a few bands doing like their own lines of masks and all that kind of thing, which is a great idea. But the converting yeah. of T-shirts and stuff into that is such a genius move. Like, what is the practicalities of going about something like that? <laughs> complicated it kept on changing like even after we had pitched the whole idea to you know our fans that we were going to make some branded ones and stuff it changed so much that we were like oh my god people are going to think that we're just making stuff up because things just kept changing you know we we find a factory that say yes yeah, send us your t-shirts we'll make masks and then they'd say but then you you also have to pay us because you know we're a factory and we need to and we we're like okay and we're like uh, how much do we save by sending you t-shirts and they're like nothing so we're like, well, that doesn't make any sense if we're going to get masks made. Like, so then we found these collectives that um, are community based that will cut and sew the t-shirts into masks. So we ended up just donating to them and then using the money uh, that we were going to use anyway to make the masks to make uh, masks in the factory. So we had like a two pronged approach. There's the factory masks, there's the the t-shirt masks and then we realized well you know we just maxed out our credit cards there's no idea how we're gonna do it so somehow we've gone from talking about how we could raise money for our families into into maxing out credit cards and that's when we were like well if we sell branded masks then we can pay for them that way and so that's it's been pretty self-sustaining except that they sold out so quickly that uh 
went yeah. straight away. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? To be able to put up something like that and people not only supporting a good cause, but yeah, let's be real, they look pretty cool as well. It's got, it's got a nice design to it. That's good work, man. Yeah, the first batch went in nine seconds and the second batch went in seven seconds, which should mean like, just keep doing it, right? But it's like, but there's capacity for these uh, factories and we definitely don't want to compete with, you know, the, the hospitals and first responders and stuff that need them too, so... Yeah, doing what you can, man. Doing what you can, and I admire you for it. It's great work. And then, in terms of things outside that as well, um, just in ways of keeping you occupied. You know, we, it's been a recurring theme with all these chats of how people are trying new stuff when we're in lockdown, figuring out new ways to kind of communicate with fans. You've done some very cool things. I mean, uh, let's talk about the book club first of all, which I really, yeah. really like as a concept. Using Zoom, right, as well. Yeah, we're using Zoom for the book club. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, talk to me about putting that together. You know, years ago. Uh, you know, many years, ago, like a decade ago, I remember, uh, we, you know, a lot of times when we put out records, I'd, I'd mention who the writers were that were influ influencing me and stuff like that. And, and some of them, people like, you know, Pynchon and um, DeLillo and, uh, you know, especially David Foster Wallace with Infinite Jest, people would say, like, how can you read books that are that long and that confusing? And so I, for a while, I was like, why don't we do a book club and we'll all get through it together? You know, there's a David Foster Wallace Infinite Summer Guide that you can do in the summer. So it was something we talked about for a while. And when this whole thing started, I thought, you know, maybe this is a way of keeping people calm, reading some books that they wouldn't otherwise read. Um, so I was planning on doing Infinite Jest, but then uh, another uh, another book club that I really like started doing War and Peace. And even though there's lockdown and there's all this time, I remember thinking like, oh man, is there really like, with everything that's going on, do I really want to start War and Peace now? You know? It's a big um, read. It's a big read though. <laughs> it's a big read. And then I realized, hey, if I feel that way and I love big reads, then maybe like people that are slightly more casual readers than even myself um, will be like, infinite chess, no thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so we decided to make it something more approachable, something that's really modern, the Chelsea Hudson book of essays tonight on someone else, which is just a really stunning um, work. And so we've been doing that. And it's also easier because people can jump in and jump out. If they miss the first five essays, they can come in on essay number six with us. And it's not like they need to have known what happened in the other essays. They're all separate. Um, so. So that's been a lot of fun. And, and Heather from Wax Idols and I have been doing it together. And it's mostly, you know, it's like each essay is like 10, 20, 30 pages tops. Um, you know, the book club is a lot of it is just getting to talk about something. You know, it's not like there's not a whole bunch of stuff that they need to understand that we're explaining like teachers, right? It's just all of us connecting on, oh, yeah. And, you know, she was talking about getting her friend to hit her in the face and stuff. Like, what do you think that was about? You know, and then it just turns into conversation, which I think connection is what we really need right now. You know? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's an amazing thing. I've said it a couple of times in these. We were chatting to uh, Danny from Berry Tomorrow, who, who also works in the NHS, National Health Service over here as well. Amazing. And he had an amazing, amazing quote that's just stuck with me so much. He was like, we've been referring to things as social distancing it's it's physical distancing we need we need to be more social than ever and establishing communities like that that's such a great way of doing that's that right very true yeah yeah it's the physical distancing that keeps you healthy how do you social how do you socially connect while physical distancing that's really interesting um i, I really i agree that's that's what it's all about and for me a lot of like you know, a lot of the stuff that I've been doing to try and stay sane, like I have a podcast on mental health and the arts and stuff. A lot of that grows out of for me getting sober was like a big, it was a big part of this, you know, is like realizing how much community is important. There's been a ton of studies that say that like there's a, there's a sort of famous experiment with rats, right? Where there's a regular water bottle and then there's a water bottle filled with cocaine water. And the famous study always says, yeah, as soon as rats try the cocaine water, they like never drink regular water again and then they die because all they do is they drink the cocaine water. And, you know, while that's very relatable, there's actually a newer study that shows that socialized rats who are in like a big cage with a bunch of other rats and playgrounds and stuff to do, they actually don't get addicted. So, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. So, so really, um, isolation is a bigger factor in the study than anybody realized. And, and that actually in addiction and all kinds of other mental health issues, isolating is almost the worst thing that you could do. So keeping a sense of connection has been really important, even, even in this uh, situation for me. And, and I've sort of tried to help other people that maybe don't have 
you know, AA meetings or NA meetings, things that are already regimented and already Zooming and already doing this stuff. So I thought maybe if I could bring a little bit of that to people just in a more entertaining way that it would still be good for everybody, you know? It's a smart idea, man. I think, I think the word community keeps coming back again and again, the more I chat to fans, because that's what you feel most at a live show as well. And obviously we can't do those in the minute and we can't be going to all of those. So excited to be getting back out on the road and all that stuff. I'm sure you are. Um, I want to touch on some of the stuff from end of last year, because I, w- I was very lucky out in LA, got to see you twice in the space of one week, which was very, very nice. Oh. Uh, so let's Where was start. that? Where did you see us again? Where was I that? saw you in LA. So I, saw, I went to the Roxy show and then I went to my chem the next night. So I got to oh, do- Oh, the Roxy and my chem, all right. That's a good- That's we, a nice double we, bill. I think in the last like two years, we've played like 16 or 18 LA shows just because they just kept selling out. So we kept on adding them. Um, so that's why I wanted to know which one you saw. But those two, that was a good, like a nice small one and then a gigantic crazy one. Yeah, dude, <laughs> crazy couple of days. Let's start with the Roxy as well, because that felt just like it was the Thursday party, man. Like it was, it was yeah. such a nice kind of capper to what was a big year for you guys. Talk to me about returning to LA and playing that show that sold out again so quickly, right? Yeah, in minutes. Um, it, was, it was funny because we had planned to be done. We had done... Uh, for for the anniversaries for the anniversary of the band the 20th anniversary we played i think eight sold out shows in la and we were like that's it you know we don't have new music or anything like that's it we should stop like you know we've played the whole country we did two nights every city eight nights in la like eight nights in new york you know crazy stuff like that um we were like without any new music we we basically have no reason to keep touring we should just we should end it you know it's over and then, uh, and then My Chemical Romance were like, well, you do have to play our first show back, though. And it was one of those things where we're like, but we already announced that we were done. They were like, so you're going to have to unannounce like, the cure. You're, gonna have to just, you're just going to have to be like, sorry, we want to play again. And, uh, and you know what? I couldn't argue with them. Like, us not playing that show didn't seem like a, a good option. And then once, you know, once we're playing that show, we're like, well, we'll be out of practice by then. We need to warm up. Let's let's do like a small, like little surprise show at the Roxy. And then we're like, is anybody going to want to go after we've played LA eight times? But, but it was great. It was fun. And also I think at this point in like Thursday has crossed the line to where it's like, we're not trying to prove anything to anybody. Like we've been a band for 21 years. We've become a sort of like part of the culture. Like when I was a kid growing up a band like Sonic Youth or something where it's like, it doesn't even matter if you've heard their last record, you know who they are you'll go see them because it's cool and it's fun and it's a part of music history and everything like, and that's kind of where I feel like we're at now where it's like, we can just do whatever we want. If we want to do new music, we'll do new music. If we want to play, we'll play and people can come or they don't come, but it doesn't really matter at this point. You know what I mean? It's just like, well, well, I that's all we are, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a great attitude to have, and particularly, you know, like I say, those couple of days out, out in LA were just absolutely wild. That show had such energy to it in the Roxy. Like, like everyone was so up for it that night. And I guess but maybe at least partly because they knew what was coming the next night. And there was like, you even alluded to it on stage, like about, you know, we've got this, this other kind of small gig down the road tomorrow night. And it was, right. it was just such a party before the party. I wanted to mention, something from the Shrine Show at MCR because you made a brilliant speech during your set just saying about how proud you were to even be playing like a small part in the legacy. I mean, I mean, talk to me about actually setting the stage because it must have been quite an emotional night, I'd imagine. You know, you're all friends together and it was a, this crazy event. Yeah, well, for, it really was a crazy night. I mean, you know, being asked to play it, first of all, was like so touching because I think one great thing about the My Chemical Romance guys is, you know, they're, they're just still, they're still in a lot of ways, the same people they were when we worked on that first record, you know, when, when we first became friends. And, and I think that like, you know, they're more co- confident as artists now and that's great. But, but just the fact that like, they never forget stuff like, Oh yeah, you were the one who helped us get started. So we want you to be a part of us restarting. Like just, that's a really, I think they have a really beautiful sense of, um, you know, where they came from and, and, uh, and, and what it means to them to be artists and, you know, be arguably the biggest band in the world and still operate like, you know, small mom and pop, uh, local business or something, you know, and, uh, and I really appreciate that about them, but the night itself was pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy, you know, like I hadn't seen them, uh, in, you know, a decade or something. And, and, uh, 
I, I really wanted to see them more than I wanted to play, which, which makes it weird too. Cause there's this huge crowd there, you know, biggest crowd we play to all year and they're not there to be won over. They're there to get to the main event, you know? So, um, it wasn't like, let's go give it our all and make a bunch of new fans. It was like, no, we're here to do our part. And, uh, and we're here to watch my cam really is what, what we're here to do. You know, I think that's interesting though, because it wasn't like, because of the scale of the event and because it was their first show back at Solon, and because people knew it particularly with yourself about your place in that, in that legacy of that band, it, it, I, I don't know how to describe it. It wasn't a regular support slot, put it that way. No one was, even if people came to you without prior knowledge of Thursday's stuff, it was still like, oh, this makes sense. This makes perfect yeah. sense. Of course Thursday are opening up before Mike can make the big return. Here we are. Right. But at the same time, it's like, you know, the tension, like people that were in the front of the crowd, right? Like the very front of the crowd had been camped out there for four days, you know, and like people love Thursday, but like we played the night before and nobody was camped outside. You know what I mean? Like it's people were really waiting to see my camp. So it wasn't like a, you know, will you have as good a show as my camp? It's like, no, will you get up there and have some fun and like get the crowd a little like, you know, hyped up even more than they are for seeing my account. That was kind of, that was the job description, at least in my mind, you know, obviously my account was like, go out there and do your thing, do whatever you want to do. But to me, it was like, guys, let's go out there and have some fun, get people psyched, you know? Yeah. Job well done, man. Job well done. <laughs> Hell of a night, that. It really, really was. Uh, you've said already, you know, you guys kind of feel like you're in a position where you could do what you want. And I know the yeah. world's incredibly weird right now. So scheduling's all over the place with everybody. But do you have ideas in mind for kind of the rest of this year, what you would like to do next? How's it all kind of working? Yeah. I mean, it's really tough to say. Like, we had, you know, we were going to play. Uh, Psycho Las Vegas. It was like us, War Paint Cursive, and we were actually going to do like a bunch of shows around that with with a really great band from from that festival. We never got to announce, so we'll probably still keep it as a surprise if the, if the festival ever comes back. Um, but you know that's all off. Um, we were planning a big surprise for New York this year. That was a multi night thing with a bunch of guests and stuff, and that's off. And so it's just it's really hard to know. You know, like, and I think that even beyond the point of like all our plans getting canceled, um, when Thursday gets together to write music at this point, you know, we take off work and we all go to a central location, you know, we lose a lot of money to be able to do stuff that we want to do, um, without having shows to raise the money that to, to be able to have the luxury to take some days off from work. I, I really don't know what'll happen, but, uh, but you know, we'll see. I mean, it was the kind of thing at the beginning of quarantine where like, we're going to send each other ideas. We're going to, you know, we're going to be so creative in this time. And now it's like, you know, one of our uh, <clears throat> extended band crew members, uh, whole family got coronavirus and we're really sick. And so it's just been, you know, other things have really been more important. Basically. I, I mean, music is just as important as it ever was, but the urgency involved with making sure that your friends are actually going to make it and stuff is, is a, it's a, strong strong psychological toll sometimes you don't feel like being productive when stuff's going on so. yeah absolutely man i don't think that anyone should feel any pressure uh, to do any anything creative that they can't or don't feel they want to but i you know i've got to say all credit to you for for trying new stuff in quarantine and putting these things out there you know it's a nice theme i've been seeing with loads of the artists we've been talking to and uh, and all credit to you for doing that and it's just always a pleasure to chat to you man i hope to get to see you face to face again very soon when all this madness is done yeah, I, I mean, the one thing that I'd just say about, like, you asked about the masks before, it was beautiful. All our friends reached out. Every, everybody, all the bands, what can I do? How can I help? How can we be involved? Got no, you know, we just, like, passed on numbers and stuff. And it's just amazing to see that it was, like, everybody was just totally ready. You know what I mean? Like, it was really, uh, I think the DIY spirit is still very much alive in this time. So. Yeah, it's good to hear, man. It really is. Uh, Jeff, take care of yourself, man, and we'll catch up with you soon, all right? Thanks, man. So good to be here with you. All right. Good to see you, man. Cheers, buddy.